Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Matt from the Gutter Hacking YouTube channel, and today we are going to be writing your first Linux game hack. Um, we're going to stick to the assault cube for the beginners, and sort of my game plan is I want to migrate those topics that we covered in Windows game hacking over to how you would do that in Linux. So we're going to be doing some signature scanning and stuff. But besides that, let's go ahead now and create our project. So open up a terminal. And I'm going to go to my YouTube folder and I'm going to make a directory. I'll call it AC hack. Go into there. Perfect. Um, then we're going to create a couple files. I'm going to create a main.cpp. Uh, I'm going to create a process manager.cpp and then a process manager.h. Perfect. Um, and then you can go ahead and then open up your text editor of choice. I'm going to use Visual Studio Code as my text editor. Go ahead and do that and open up that project. Perfect. Okay, so the first thing we're going to write is this process manager.h file. And what I like to do right away is define um, default source. It's like this. And what this will allow us to do is use some code that's normally not accessible, um, which is perfect for us because we're going to be needing to use that, some of that code. I'm now going to include um, stdio.h. I'm also going to include standard library.h. Let's go ahead and include string.h. And then we're going to also include strings.h, which is something you Windows programmers might not have seen before. Um, it's just an addition to the string library. We're going to include Unix standard library, so unistd. Um, I'm also going to go ahead and include some sys files. I'm going to include sys slash stat, and then I'm going to include sys slash types. And then we're going to include file control, which is going to let us do a lot because in Linux, most things are treated as files. So if I want to open up a handle on another program's memory, I do that by sort of the same methods that I would open up a normal file. We'll get to that later though. Um, then I'm going to include a file to help us work with directories. And then I'm going to include error note if we want to do some error handling. Perfect. Now just a personal preference. I usually like to type def unsigned int as uint. And besides that, now we can create our class. So I'm going to call this class process manager. And what we're going to use this class for is it's going to, we're going to give it essentially the name of the program that's running and it will attach itself to that program and then we can uh, either write to its memory or read to its memory and other stuff that we're going to talk about later. Um, go ahead and create those brackets and first I'll do private and I want to create a character buffer process name string I don't know, I'll give it a thousand twenty four bytes perfect that's going to hold the name of our actual running process then I'm going to use a long for the process ID, like that. I'm going to default it to zero. And then I'm going to say int process handle equals zero, like such. Um, and then I want to create one private function called long find base address. And it's going to take a module that's a constant character pointer. So the name of the memory module, and by default, it's going to be set to null. And the reason I'm doing that is because I want to give the users the option if they want to input a module or not. But if they don't input a module, it's going to go to the first defaulted executable area of memory. All right, now we can do public. Perfect. Let's make an unsigned long, and we'll say target base address. Set that equal to zero. And then I'm going to create the constructor process manager, like such. It's going to take a constant, oops, a constant char signature, um, and that signature. Um, oh, sorry, wrong thing. The process name. <laughs> Getting ahead of myself. It's going to take in the name of the process, like I had mentioned, and then it's also going to take, if you want that name of that memory module. So this is where you would input the name of the memory module. But like I said, it also defaults to null, so perfect. 
And then the deconstructor is simple enough. It's not going to take anything. Perfect. Um, we're going to create a Boolean returned function called signature payload. Um, we'll give it a constant char signature. And this signature is what we're going to be scanning for in the other processes memory to help us find the byte codes that we want to write over um, with no op instructions to give us unlimited ammo. Um, and that being said, the next thing is going to be the payload. And then after that, do a constant int sig lang. And uh, the reason I want to give these lengths and stuff is because I don't, you know, just in case you're not going to use a character pointer, I want it to be like a confirmed length. So you don't have to use string length because there's a possibility of string length not working if you don't have a null byte at the end and yada, yada, yada. So I'm forcing the user to enter in um, the length of the signature and the length of the payload. So then I'll call this one pay length, um, do constant int b size, and then I'm gonna give an optional uint sig offset. And what this is gonna be used for is when you find your memory signature, if you want to have an offset by some sort of value, you can input that there. Um, so like, let's say you're looking for a memory signature, but that memory signature isn't exactly over the byte code that you want to write over, if that makes sense. So then you can give an offset. So it'll find that memory signature and then offset, you know, you know, if you give it four it'll offset four bytes and then write your payload there instead of writing your payload right at where that signature is. So perfect. Um, now we're going to do bool write oops, process memory and that's going to take an unsigned uh, long we'll do long and we'll, it'll be the address so the address that we want to write to in the other program's memory and then we want to use a void pointer buffer and we want to use uint size perfect now we're going to do bool read process memory and we'll do another uh, unsigned long here for address the address that we're going to read from and then we'll do another void pointer for the buffer that we want to write that red data into and then we'll do uint size again for the amount of bytes we want to read okay i'm pretty sure this is all we got to do for this class but we will know once we start writing the .cpp file now so if you want to go ahead and switch over to that .cpp file um, the first thing we want to do in here is include obviously process manager.h and then the first thing I think I want to tackle is the constructor but I know once I start writing the constructor we're gonna to have to take a break and write another function to complete it but let's start let's just start writing the constructor I guess so we're gonna do process uh, manager colon colon process manager const char I'll just call it process name. Let's just do that. Process name, constant char module. We don't want to do the default equals null in this. That will spit us out an error. It's just going to assume this from this definition of this class. I'm also going to change this to CZ. Perfect. Um, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in some error checking. Uh, I'm going to make sure that the length of the inputted string is not greater than 1023 bytes because we only allocated, you know, 1024 bytes and we have to accumulate for the length of the string plus the null byte. So I'm going to say if str lang cz process name is greater than or equal to actually just greater than 1023. Um, then we can say f printf std error. Um, say process name is too long. I think it's t double o. Yep. Slash n. Perfect. And then we'll call an exit failure. Perfect. Now what I want to do is I want to copy. If that's successful, I want to copy. Um, the CZ process name string over into the stored process name string for our class. So I'll say like this, perfect. 
And then now we're going to create a couple of different variables for scanning directories because we need to find the process ID of the process that we're targeting, sort of like we had what we had to do in Windows. So the way that's done is by scanning through the slash proc directory. We're going to go through each process ID that's in the proc directory. We're going to check the name of that process and compare it to the inputted process name that's given at the definition of the class. So to do that, we need to create a struct direct pointer. I'm going to call it directory. Uh, we'll call it directory object. I can type and I'll default it to null. Uh, we're going to create a dir pointer also, and I'll call that directory handle. And I will also default that to null. Perfect. Now what we're going to do is we're going to attach um, the directory handle um, to the slash proc directory. So that's done like this. We're going to set directory handle equal to open dir. Give it the slash proc. Perfect. And then I want to also check in here if it's equal to null. Because then if it's equal to null, we can give an error. We can say, no, failed to attach to slash proc. Like so. I'll put a slash in there. Perfect. We'll do exit, exit failure. Alrighty then. Um, now we're going to do a while loop and we're going to scan, we're going to use that while loop to scan through each of the, um, the, um, the process IDs, IDs that I had mentioned earlier. And we're going to go into those process IDs and compare them to the inputted process name to see if we can find the, the process that we inputted. So like we're going to input a name to process name and we're essentially going to search through this directory now looking for that process. So the way we do that is I'm going to say while and then I'm also going to assign directory object now equal to read dir directory handle while it's not equal to null we're going to keep looping. So basically what this is going to do is every single time there is still an available directory, keep looping. That's sort of what this while loop says. And this while loop also inside of it is going to assign the new directory object to that current directory that it's looking at. And you'll see what I mean when I write the other code. Um, but now I can check if a2i directory object d name is not equal to zero. And what this is going to do is going to scan and make sure that um, the the directory that we're looking at is a number. So like this directory object d name is the name of the folder that we're currently looking at. But if we look at slash proc over here, like I will just ls proc you see there's a bunch of numbers. These are process IDs. So each process gets its own folder. We just want to make sure that it's not, you know, IRQ or bus or anything else. We want to make sure that we're actually looking at a number. And if we are looking at a number, we can then enter into that section. But now I'm going to declare a couple more variables. Like I want to create a character buffer called uh, file path. We'll call it that. And we'll give it another 1024 bytes. We'll say, oops, we'll say char pointer file buffer equals null. And we'll say off t file length. Uh, we'll default that to zero. We'll do int fd and also set that equal to zero. So I basically set it up so we're going to be able to get, we're going to, have a path to a certain file. I'll sort of give you actually an example here. So if I were to go into process ID 213, oops, sorry, cd slash proc slash 213, perfect. And I ls, you see there's a bunch of shit in here. Um, we've got like, if I were to cat stat, I can get a bunch of information in here. I can get a bunch of information about the process. Um, as far as its stats, I can do cat um, status. 
which is at the top you're gonna give us the name um, and that's why we need the file path so it's gonna be slash proc slash 213 slash status so that's why I have this file path buffer and then what I want to do is create a file buffer to copy this data into which we will malloc depending on you know I, I'm probably gonna set it to a default size so it just copies only you know let's say like 215 bytes or we'll have a default to 50 bytes or something like that so I can probably set file length the amount we want to copy to like 50 um, and then FD is obviously the file descriptor that we're gonna open up on that file so all right next thing um, that we can do is I want to s printf um, and we're gonna s printf into file path it's gonna be slash proc slash percent s slash status and say directory object and get the name right so now in file path we have that name of the file they're gonna be reading from to help us find the name and now what we can do is go ahead and open that file so I'll say if FD equals open file path O underscore RD only less than zero. And obviously I'm gonna do some error checking here. Um, F printf has to be error. Fail to open file. Perfect. Oh, sorry, F printf. Perfect. Alrighty, and then if it does fail, I want to make an exit, of course, with an exit failure flag. Perfect. Um, I'm actually going to go up here and default the file link, I think, to 128. I think that's a good number to default the amount of data we want to read. And then um, we can now go ahead and say if file buffer equals we need to do a char from your cast of malloc we'll say file length equals, equals null f for def if malloc doesn't work uh, we'll say failed malloc slash n and do another exit failure so at this point what we've done is we've got the file path and we've opened up that file path and we've opened up that file and we've allocated a buffer to store some data from the status file and now we need to probably write to it but i'm gonna mem set actually um first i want to set file buffer null and file length so null out that file buffer, all zeros, and now we can read from it. So we're gonna say if read fd into file buffer, given file length. Um, we're gonna say if it's less than zero, then there's probably an error. S to the error. Failed to read file contents. Exit failure perfect so now we read from the file since we've read from the file we don't really need to have the file script anymore so I'm gonna close it um, and now I'm gonna search for the uh, process name string I'm gonna say if str str in file buffer and then process name string not equal null then that name is in there. All right, so we can say printf process found slash n. And then I'll say process id equals a2l directory, oops, directory object d name, like so. So we can save that process id. Um, and now I want to create a, um, a file path so we can open up a handle on that target's memory. So I'm going to say char target memory location 
go to 1024 bytes, I guess. And we'll say S printf, and we will do target memory location slash proc slash percent s slash mem and we'll do directory object dname okay so the reason i have done this and we've saved that string is because now if i call open on this path here it will open up that target's memory which is what we want to do obviously to be able to read and write to it so now i can say actually i'm going to put a little comment here and we're going to say get yeah we'll say get the program base address and then we'll come back to that later and then i'm going to say if process handle equals open target memory location o read write less than zero I just get this little update notification out of the way, perfect. Then if that fails, we obviously fail to open up the target's memory. So fail to open target memory, finish mark, like so. Do exit, exit failure. Okay, so now we've opened up the target memory location. I can now free file buffer. I do not need that anymore. And I can call break which will exit us from this loop um, that we started here. Uh, but I also need to make sure and call free on file buffer down here. Yeah. Perfect. All right, so I also need to, yeah, close the directory handle. So we'll close directory directory handle perfect um, and that looks good I'm gonna go ahead and very quickly write the deconstructor so process manager I'm gonna say if process handle not equals zero close process handle perfect so basically all we're going to do is we're going to close the process handle that we opened up here when our class gets deconstructed so perfect automatic handling for us but what we need to do is go back here and we need to set target base address equal to find base address and give it module all right but we need to write this find base address function so let's go i want to write i think i'll write it up here like here um and if i remember process manager find base address is a long return because we're returning the address of the memory module that we want to start searching for the signature in so i'm gonna do like this and then find why is that Okay, there we go. Um, find base address is not showing up. That's weird. Find base address. And then I should be able to do constant char module. Okay, perfect. It just wasn't showing up in IntelliSense. I don't know why. But we got to create some variables here. We'll say int fd equals zero. We'll do char file location 1024 bytes for that so we'll do another char base address 1024 because we're going to be reading the file through text and we have to convert that text into a number obviously and then we'll do char pointer equals null perfect i'm going to sprintf um, file location and we're going to give it slash proc slash percent lu for long and signed and maps so maps is gonna what's gonna it's gonna give us the um, gist of the memory modules that exist in that program and then we can just do process id perfect now i'm going to say if 
fd equals open file location o underscore rd only um, say less than zero perfect we can do f printf std error and we'll say uh, failed to I'll just say failed to open I'll just say failed to open file I guess and we'll do exit failure fail perfect all right um, do char file buffer equals char pointer malloc and we'll say just a hundred thousand bytes one two three one two three should be enough if file buffer equals, equals null then we have an error so we can f print f failed malloc so exit exit failure all right mem set now file buffer to zero like that and we will mem set base address zero one thousand twenty four perfect now what i'm going to do is i'm going to read the contents of file buffer one by one so I get the whole entire file. So we'll say for int i equals zero. Um, then I'm gonna say read fd file buffer plus i, and we'll just say one each time. As long as that's greater than zero, we keep going and say i plus plus. And then we just put a semicolon on there. It'll just do everything for us in there. So this will loop for us as long essentially as long as read is able to read from the file we'll keep doing that um then we're going to say after that close the file we don't need it anymore because we read all the contents out of it um now i'm going to say if module not equal null if i can type um then we'll say if ptr equals str str file uh, buffer looking for module equals equals null f printf because it didn't find the module you're looking for it will say failed to find um we'll just say base address or you know we'll say failed to find module Perfect. Um, I'm gonna do an exit exit failure here again. And then we're gonna say else. We say if ptr equals str str file buffer, and we'll just look for r dash xp. If it's equal to null, then obviously we failed to find a default section of memory. So we'll say f printf, std error. Uh, fail, we'll just say failed to, to find memory module again. Perfect. And we'll give it an exit with an exit failure. All right, so just a quick summary of this again. What we've done is we've opened up the memory map file to start looking for a module to start scanning memory at and it's checking if module is not equal to null then let's go ahead and um, use the module that was inputted by the user but if it is null um, go to a default section of memory and store a pointer pointing at the text that is resembling that section of memory um, now we can copy the address so we'll do it like this say while a while pointer not equal slash n and and pointer is greater than equal to file buffer we can say ptr minus minus this is essentially just adjusting the location of our pointer for us so we can start copying over the hex address pointer 
plus plus at the end because it's going to go one too far. And then we'll say for int i equals zero um, pointer not equal. If, as long as it's not equal, this dash sign will include or we'll keep increasing i and we'll use i to help us copy over the base address. So we'll say base address i equals ptr. So you see this loop is going to copy over now that address from, from the text buffer that we copied and we can do ptr plus plus. Perfect. Um, and then after that, what we'll return is a conversion. We'll return a conversion of base address over to the user. Perfect. And I think that should be it. Did I, I need to probably free up the memory. Get out. So like file buffer. So let's free up file buffer. Free file buffer. Is that the only thing I'm out? Yeah. Okay, so we got our freeze and we close the file. Perfect. So this will return us now the base address of where we can start scanning memory. So perfect. So now let's go ahead and write some functions that's going to allow us to read and write memory. So um, I'm going to go and let's write it down here. We'll say bool process manager write process memory unsigned long address void pointer buffer and you int size do that I'm just gonna copy this and change this over to read process memory perfect and in here it's pretty simple Oops. we want to else seek process handle address seek set so we want to go to the address in memory that we want to write to and we want to say if not write um, process handle buffer and size um, and if it's not, obviously, because we're doing a not right, then that means there was an error. F print F, STD error. Failed to write to target memory. Exclamation mark. Perfect. Exit. Exit failure. Perfect. Now we can L seek back to the beginning. Do process handle zero seek set. Yeah. Perfect. Return true. I'm actually gonna um, set this to return false instead of exiting because it's a bool. Return false. Perfect. Um, I think what I'm gonna do is literally just copy this over to here, and I'm gonna change this to read. And that should, I should, yeah, that should work. All right. Cool, so now we have a write process memory function and a read process memory function. Perfect. Um, now what I want to do is write a function that will actually launch our signature payload. So let's go down here and we'll say process manager um, signature payload. That's what I have for it. Constant char signature. Um, I'm actually just going to go literally over to here and copy this shit so I don't have to type it again. Perfect. All right. Uh, except you want to remove that. Perfect. Oh, what, what's happening? Doesn't want to work. Hmm. Why is that? Oh, I think I know why. I forgot to put bool right here. There we go. 
perfect. All right, so first thing I wanna do is I wanna create a buffer. Say if, actually no, I'm gonna say char buff equals char pointer malloc siglang times b size if buff equals equals null then f print f the error failed to memory um yeah we'll have it exit with an exit failure Alrighty. Um, now that we created a buffer to hold the read memory, we can start scanning. So we're gonna say for int i equals zero. We're gonna say read process memory. Target base address plus i. Buff siglang times b size. Um, we're gonna make sure, yeah, I can just, I don't have to say equals equals true there because it's gonna default with that. I can just put a semicolon and then I can say, um, we want i to increase. So plus equals, yeah, we want it to increase siglang times b size. Yes, perfect. All right, yeah, that's how I wanna structure that for loop. Go ahead and do it like that. Um, and then we're gonna have another for loop inside of here. We'll say for um, int j set it equal to zero. Oh, I should actually probably explain what's happening here first. What we're doing is we're looping and copying a chunk of memory that is the size of sig length, if that sort of makes sense. We're basically copying over the equivalent amount of memory starting at, you know, index I and index I is increasing, um, you know, as we go on copying a new section of memory. So then we can check that, which is now what we're going to do here. We can say now if um, J is less than say sig line times B size minus sig line minus one j plus plus um and then we can say if mem cmp buff plus j signature sig length um if they're equal to each other we can say printf Signature found exclamation mark. Um, and then what we'll do is we need to make sure that payload is not equal to null. If payload is not equal to null, then we can write that payload there. Um, we'll say write process memory target base address plus i plus j plus sig offset, if we had one, um, we want to give it payload, and then pay length. Perfect. Just like so. And I think what I'm going to do for this is I'm going to use a go to statement and sort of just cheat around this. We'll say end, and then at the end we'll put free buff. Um, and then we'll put return true. Um, and then what we'll do is put go to end here. Yeah. Like that. Perfect. All right. Now that's pretty much all we need to do now for us now to go on to main.cpp. So for main.cpp, we'll just include process manager. Perfect. Um, we'll just write in main. Um, exit success. 
Okay. Perfect. Constant char Susie signature. I cannot spell is equal to oh sorry like this is equal to and then the signature that we're going to use for this demo is here i will cover on how i created the signature in another video but we're just going to use this to make sure our code works and then we're going to say char cz op code is we want three x 90s for no op instructions so like that Perfect. And now we should be able to say process manager, we'll say, we'll say prop manager. We can give it AC underscore client. It's the name of the assault cube client. If that didn't make any sense. And we can say proc manager dot signature payload, CZ signature, CZ opcode. We'll do str lang cz signature and then I'll do str lang payload sorry cz opcode cz opcode um, and then I want b size to be 64 um, and then the offset of that I remembered is 4 perfect all right Oh, and if you didn't know, the reason we're using B size is sort of like, I'm using like a buffering technique to make it scan faster. And I found that there's a sweet buffer spot around 64, but yeah, that should be what we need. So what I'm gonna do is come back over here and we'll go back into this and I will do G++ now main.cpp dash wall dash o say main and we have an issue undefined reference hmm oh I am an idiot I need to also do process manager dot cpp perfect I'm going to quickly open up um, let's actually go over to here, open up uh, assault cube. And if I go back into here now and sudo dot slash main, enter in my password, signature found. Oh, and it crashed. That's exactly what I like to see. So I'm going to go through and figure out what I did. All right, so I figured out what I did wrong and I cannot believe I made this mistake. Simply just change these slashes here so that they are X terminated. And if you go ahead now and compile it and we go over to here and I'll restart a salt cube like so. And we now run it, it will run. And you see we have a limited ammo. So, that is it for today. I plan on recouping everything in the next video when I talk about how I created the signature and go a little bit more in depth. I just wanted to get you guys started with some Linux game hacking. But besides all that, I will catch you guys in the next video. Peace.